if that fell down on an assembly, it doesn't bear thinking about. What is it that makes this RAAC concrete so dangerous? Um, well, it's, it's variability from normal standard reinforced concrete. You can see here, it's a very dense and heavy material. It has aggregate present, which gives it its strength with reinforcing bars as well. With RAAC concrete, which is reinforced autoclave auto aerated concrete, as you can see, there is absolutely no aggregate present. So it's very soft and a real easy check is uh, a Phillips screwdriver and you can drive that in to the concrete. So you can actually see it's, it's soft and can make a hole as you can see here. This isn't gonna happen here. And that was weak from the day it was made as well. It's not, it can get weaker with um, the absorption of water and, and carbon dioxide, which can have problems with in, inducing corrosion. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't strong at any point. So, so you know, what, what, what sort of strength does this kind of material actually have? I mean, can, can, you, can it be broken just by being bumped into? You say that contractors well, could have come in and damaged it. To give you an idea, I'm, you know, if I'm trying to break off a bit of concrete, there's no way I'm going to need a hammer and chisel, a big hammer and chisel to use this. This is so weak that you can just break it off like that. The schools were sent a questionnaire last year, I don't know when last year, to say, I hope you're right, concrete. <clears throat> um, they're asking school teachers who have got no formal qualifications to do with concrete for a question that I, I would probably, if I wasn't a structural engineer, wouldn't be able to answer. Um, so subsequently, I think because of that, the estate, the Department of Education produced an estate's guidance note, which was in December 2022. Um, this was issued by the Department of Education, and unfortunately, I think probably added to the confusion rather than actually helping out because it's as i've said is it there if it's there test it then you make a decision the estates um, publication is a 50 page document um, i found it very confusing so i think the schools have gone we're not going to worry about that we're not qualified to do it and it's only now that everyone's rushing around playing catch up do you think that the government has an idea of how widespread this issue could be? No, Not I don't believe. I have, there's been a number of numbers quoted about how many schools we have in the in England. Um, I think it was 22,000. Um, I was listening to the um, educational secretary, I do believe. Uh, she stated um, because they've fallen behind, um, they're going to increase the number of surveying people who they've got on board with government from two to eight. I don't know if it's people or companies. Irrespective, eight companies, eight large companies, have got 22,000 schools to look at. Um, I don't think, that, I'm unsure of what's actually happened, how many schools have been tested. And because of this staged approach, the estate's guidance note in one instance said, you just do a visual survey. Well, as you can see, if that's painted, there's no way you're gonna tell the difference between rack concrete and standard concrete. So it needs a lot more than just a visual survey. So I don't really know what's been done. I don't even know, you know, we've said 100 schools are gonna be close. I don't know what investigations have done. And the, um, the minister said that, and it's the first time I've ever heard that the Institute of Structural Engineers guidance note had been mentioned because the revised issue, April 2023, has a risk assessment section at the back. She then said that they've changed their risk assessment from green to orange to red. It's not as easy as that, but why have they done that? And I, I believe we have heard some issues that they've had other failures of rack concrete. None of that has been released to the structural engineering sector. You have to determine the construction detail of the roof. Every school I've gone to in this um, London borough, I've had to do a Google map search on the school, and that is my drawing. That is the drawing I've got. There are no drawings. and none of these schools, we have any idea how they're constructed. If we don't have drawings, which isn't unusual, because it's the same with a lot of the highway structures. We don't have uh, draw, you know, competent drawings for, the, for a number of the bridges that have been built. As you said, this is particularly prominent in public buildings, government buildings. Why is that? Um, I think, I believe that rack concrete emanated from Sweden. And I think they produced the rack concrete back in the 20s. It was used extensively over here after the war. 
and so it's been used by public authorities um, to build schools and colleges and hospitals for the growing um, population that we had after the you know after the 45 war um, and so it was it was purchased by a, a number of these public organizations for for use in public buildings um, but like as, as I said I've actually seen this in a residential property as well so it really it could be anywhere and, and you say a, a residential property, are, are we talking people's houses this could be in, or is it blocks of flats? This, this was a house that had been converted into a house in Mogg's Block, you can see, and the, the new owner was going to swap it back to be a big, nice big house. And I was very surprised because that was actually in the floor. So people have been walking on top of it. And unfortunately, a number of these samples come from that property. And I'm very sure that the structural engineer who we were dealing with would have condemned the property, or condemned this, because it was so, this, this was just, these pieces of concrete were just falling off. 